feet. Where's my super shoes? Where is my super shoes? is a super shoe. I think if you were being grumpy, you would say it was an expensive shoe. If you were being a bit less cynical, you'd say it was a shoe that's expensive for a reason. A shoe that's uh, packed with new technology and increasingly a shoe that has a carbon plate in it. And check this shoe has carbon plate. This is unusual because it's a trail shoe. It's kind of the first uh, Nike have something, I can't even find it for sale in this country. So I'm pretty much thinking this is the first carbon plate trail shoe and it is the Vective from the North Face. Smells new. This will retail for around £200. When I'm kind of justifying the price in my head, I kind of think that the, the carbon plate is a whole new area for research and development for a company. It's almost like a fourth element if you think of the outsole, the midsole and the upper. What is this shoe for? Well, it's a trail shoe. It's designed for hard packed, rocky trails. It's actually designed for UTMB. So ultra, real long distances. What are they not for? Well, they're not for mud. They're not for bog. I won't be using these over Bleaklo. It's not what they're designed for. The manufacturer's quoted weight is 288 grams per shoe. That will be an industry size nine, most likely. In my UK 11, they are 340 grams per shoe. I tend to think of any shoe around 300 grams or less being a very light shoe. So 340 is, is pretty good. I can't find out the stack. Um, your foot kind of sits here-ish. It's certainly quite a bit of stack. The drop is six millimeters. One of the other key design characteristics, um, other than the carbon plate, is the rocker design, which means you have a sort of continuous curve. When you stand in the shoe, you're stationary in this portion. I'd say they feel less than six millimetre drop, almost like a zero drop, but you, you probably just feel a slight zero to three millish drop there. But of course, it being a rocker, then as you move through the gate, you drop down and toe off. More on that in a second. The upper is a very comfortable one piece engineered mesh. So there's no separate tongue, it's all made out of one piece. On both sides in the midfoot area, they've used Matrix, which is a fabric that uses Aramid, uh, which most people think of as having Kev Kevlar is the um, hoover of Aramid. Anyway, it has very strong fiber woven into this, basically non-stretchy. Works really well in the midfoot area because it means you can cinch up those lace laces. If you're wanting to purchase these shoes online, which I guess is more of a thing at the moment, uh, they are true to size, bang on. So a sock-like booty, one piece upper, added padding for where the tongue effectively is, and an added padded section in the rear here, which is kind of like uh, suede. It's quite nice. Hmm. Moving down, then the carbon plate sits directly on top of the midsole. That's unusual actually. Most carbon plates I've seen are kind of sandwiched in the, in the midsole. So you can feel it on the inside, it's firm, which means that all the benefits of the midsole are how the shoe performs on the ground over the terrain. And yet yeah, it feels firm, but when, when I'm walking around in the shoe, they feel really comfortable. So the addition of the carbon plate is to add that little bit of pop, that little, spring every step. I suspect I'll need to do some quite long runs because it's, it's marginal gains, it's just a little tiny bit each step. One interesting thing is when you flex the shoe, it, it does bend and it bends, it bends here. If I get, these are my other carbon plate shoes, they flex sort of evenly across the whole shoe. This feels like it flexes kind of, I guess where you'd want it to flex, where your foot flexes. Now, whether they've done that by engineering the carbon to be thinner at that point, or whether it's just that there's less midsole at that point, I'm not sure, but that is kind of interesting. And it has that poppy spring. North Face call their carbon plate. The 3D Vective plate. Now, I've run in shoes with 
a slight rocker, not that kind of rocker, to the midsole. These are possibly a little more pronounced. It's gonna be interesting to see how that fares. So the idea of a, a rocker midsole is that it just helps transition through the gate from landing to toe off. The outsole isn't super aggressive, but it's sticky. Uh, they're about three and a half mil lugs, fit for purpose, I guess. Right, got about a week to put some proper miles into these. get my uh, conclusions done while I'm out on a run so it's all fresh. Um, first of all, caveats, North Face sent me the shoes but they haven't paid me to do anything or say anything so you're going to see it at the same time as, as the brand does. Secondly, I haven't been able to put as many miles into these as I would have liked to have done, especially as they are kind of an ultra shoe. Haven't been very well and I've only had about a week to test them. I think I should come back and do a second video that would be that would be cool. Thirdly and most importantly I'm not going to be tempted to test these as a fell shoe. Sometimes I get trail shoes and I think hey, they're pretty grippy I'll I'll test them as a summer fell shoe. That would be unfair on these shoes it's just not what they're for. Right so cons I'm going to get the cons out of the way first it's not too many. I'm struggling to get as much heel lock as I would like. There isn't that extra hole here even if there was because this up was pretty stretchy i'm not quite sure it would do the job so so for my ankle shape maybe it is to do with the shape of this regarding the shape the the last that these shoes are built on i've waffled on about that and i've been editing and it's so boring i'm going to put it at the end of the video so if you're interested in the shape of these go to the end for most people they're absolutely fine and they're kind of medium but there's room to splay and it's a stretchy forefoot so it's all good stability is kind of fine but occasionally when going at speed on some of the descents there's a few turny moments it's purely to do with the, the stack it's not it's not really a, a, an issue there the only other negative i can think of is that they gained a little bit more weight when completely drenched again it's been really pick, nick, nick, picky because it's not really designed to be getting soaking wet but yeah they gained about 90 grams the matrix won't be gaining weight because it can't the footbed isn't like a sponge, like some are, so that won't, so I think it's just this upper, but yeah. Right, so what about pros? There's a lot of pros, I, I love it. I've really enjoyed running in it. The question is bigger than this shoe. Do we need carbon plates in trail shoes? And I think this will be emphatically answering that question with a yes, because I think fundamentally, this lower section here really works. So starting at the bottom, the grip, yeah, it's fine for what it's designed to be. The midsole, I'm gonna cut in some footage of how it interacts with the ground. It really is soft enough so it, it complies to the terrain and it grips well from the midsole. This white, it's a, it's a dual density, this white being softer, it's, it's really um, lively. So it's got, got a nice, um, nice spring to it, responsive. Uh, the black part is firmer so you get a really nice speedy nature to the run when you need it to be speedy it's speedy so the cool bit the carbon plate it's hard really to review that separate to the midsole but certainly 
the partnership of the plate and the midsole perform really well. The big positive is it manages to work as a rocker, but also if you're up on your forefoot, it's working as a more sort of regular shape shoe. And actually when it comes to descending, I really like them. And I think that's because when you're landing on your, on your heel, although there's a fair amount of stack, the biggest point is here, at the rear portion of the shoe, there's not actually too much there. So that's inherently stable when descending. So to conclude, you'll notice I didn't talk about price. I mean, it's value really, isn't it? And that's subjective and uh, I'm not gonna go there. People spend a lot more on road shoes. I tell you what it is, it trucks along. That's my conclusion. It trucks along. It just, uh, just keeps rolling on. The overall feeling is that of comfort. Comfy ride while retaining that responsiveness which is, I guess, what a lot of shoe designers are aiming for. I don't quite know how they've done that because they've put the carbon plate on top of the midsole. So whether all that comfort's coming from the insole or whether the carbon plates are more flexible than you'd expect, I don't think so. Kind of a, yeah, hey, it's magic. Magic comfort. Or whether it's simply the way the midsole is interacting with the ground on hard stuff. You'll notice that the black portion, the firm, firmer portion, takes up more of the midsole on the medial side. Really smart design, as it just adds a little bit of, dare I say, stability and stops over pronation a tiny bit. It's not like you've, you're feeling much control or support, but I just noticed it when looking at the slow-mo stuff. It's just supporting that inside edge really well. Just been fiddling with lace tensions to get that heel up that I want. Kind of got there. I think it's quite critical because the padding under the tongue is pretty minimal. So uh, yeah, you can over tighten and then it hurts a bit on the top of your foot. But I'm pretty much there. But yeah, it's a little bit fiddly. Now I did promise not to review these as a fell shoe, didn't I? Or as a winter shoe or even as a UK specific shoe, so I, I won't, I won't, I won't, I promise. But, if they put some big beefy lugs on the bottom of this, they'd be still with flat bottom lugs, so they work on these harder sections. Ooh. Ooh. Just saying. So a score for the North Face Flight Vective on my scale of peak pretender and peak possible and peak proof and peak perfection. Um, they're a really good shoe, they're, they're, they're peak proof, but the, um, the peaks that I'm thinking of aren't my peaks. They're not the Peak District, they're, they're the French Alps or something like that. Um, so yeah, in the, in the right situation, they're, they're a really, really good shoe. I'm not yet sure whether they'll be making it into my shoe rotation, honestly, um, but I'll, I'll try them again in the spring, in the summer and see, uh, see how they fare. But at, at the moment, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's not for me around here. Uh, thanks for watching, nearly to the end. Please like and subscribe because it helps me out and there's much more chance that I'll actually be able to make more of these kinds of videos. I hope that was useful. If I didn't say at the beginning that it's true to size, it's true to size. Cheers. Now, if you're in the majority of shoe buyers out there and you, you care about the width of the forefoot, I would say it's it's medium, just over 100 millimeters across the widest bit of the forefoot in my UK 11. Uh, there's quite a bit of volume in that upper, so there's room for your toes to display. If you're a shoe customer who cares about the shape of the upper and thinks about shoes as I do, on like a continuum from Altra and Topo on one side all the way over to some Brooks or Adidas that are quite pointy, Again, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, I didn't have I didn't have an issue. My feet shape are very sort of splayed. There is a slight point in here for your big toe. Most people will find it absolutely fine.